Hi guys, I just love to sneak up on y'all unexpected, no announcement, no I'm about to do a video, just pop up out of nowhere and say hi. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, if your birthday passed, happy birthday, whichever one. Um, I'm so excited, I haven't done a video in like a month, but it's only because I've been really trying to study out what it is that we're gonna talk about today. So today we're gonna talk about Jesus, like who is Jesus, you know? Um, when I was first coming to the faith, I kind of was like confused because I'm like, I believe in God, but I'm confused about the Jesus part. Like, do I pray to Jesus or do I pray to God? Like, I don't get what role white Jesus plays in all of this. You know what I mean? And um, I re I've read the Bible a couple of times now. This last time that I read the book of Hebrews, I was just like blown away because I'm like, this describes Jesus so perfectly. I'm so in love with the, bo uh, the book of Hebrews. And I feel like it kind of breaks down uh, what Jesus did for us. Um, through the crucifixion and so we're just gonna go through it and we're gonna talk about it and yeah I'm so excited to be doing a video I missed you guys so I'm back let's go um, so basically like I said this video is about I believe in God but I'm confused about the Jesus part a lot of people are like oh I believe in God and simply stop there it's like no you have to believe in God and then also believe that he sent his son Jesus Christ to uh, die on the cross for us um, so it's not a matter of if Jesus was here, it's a matter of who you think Jesus is. So three of the world's largest religions, the three monotheistic religions, which are Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three of these religions acknowledge the fact that a man named Jesus was here. Um, Islam says, yes, Jesus was, was here, but he was just a prophet. Um, Judaism says, yes, Jesus was here, but he was a blasphemer and we don't believe that he was the Messiah and we're waiting for another Messiah to come. It's just, we as Christians, we believe, yes, Jesus was here and we do believe that he was the savior. You know, we are the ones that believe that Jesus is who he said he was. So it's not really a matter of Jesus was here. All the religions say, oh yeah, there was a guy here named Jesus. We just don't believe what it is that he said. And so I'm just like, well, I'm gonna take Jesus at his word. If it's not a matter of if he was here or not, then if he came, I'm going to believe that he is who he says he is. Um, but we're not, I'm not going to jump into it <laughs> and start getting into a fight with y'all already. But let me focus. Um, yeah, so it's not a matter of if Jesus was here. Jesus was here. It's a matter of what it is that you believe about him. And as Christians, we believe that he is who he says he is. We believe that he was the son of God that he um, claimed to be. And listen, I came through extra like, let me just, I'm you know getting serious bring all my, my hair to the front I'm kidding focus um, but yeah so three of the world's major religions say that Jesus was here and um, basically like the way I'm I've been understanding it the way God has been you know processing it with me is basically like sin entered the world through one man um, because Adam and Eve sinned um, that made every human being after that have to deal with the sin nature that made every human after that have a falling out with God and so since sin entered the, the world through one man salvation also had to enter the world through one man and so Adam messed the whole thing up and then Jesus came and fixed it um, and Jesus basically is the Word of God um, so it's kind of like, well, how is Jesus a part of God? Like God is a triune being there's he's a three-part being it's God himself Jesus and the Holy Spirit but they're three in one and it's like well how can that be three in one but it's just like us we're three in one we're mind body and soul you have a body you have a soul and you also have um, a, a, a mind you know what I mean so it's like we're a three-part being and we're made after God's image just like he's three-part being and Jesus is the part of God uh, that is the part of God his word you know, Jesus is the Word of God. Um, when things were created, if you read Genesis, um, it says when God was creating the world, the animals, everything, God did not get down on his hands and knees and create the world. He, he did not get out on his hands and knees and carve out oceans. God spoke. God used his word to create everything. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, okay, I'm going to separate separate the, the heavens from, from, the, from the earth. And it, it happened. God, God said, God said, God said. God created everything through his word. And so Jesus is God's word wrapped in flesh. And so that's how Jesus is a part of God. Jesus is the words that God speaks. And God took the words that he speaks and wrapped it up 
and put it inside of a body. Um, so in John 1, 4, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Jesus is referred to as the Word of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. And so it says, In the beginning there was the Word of God, and all things were made through him. So Jesus has always been around, and everything that we are and everything that we see was made through Jesus, who is the Word of God. Um, John 1 14 says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his 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 grace. No, excuse me We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only Son who came from the father full of grace and truth. I'm gonna read that again John 1 14 says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth So Jesus is the word of God wrapped in flesh. Okay, so then, why did God take his word, wrap it in flesh, and send it to the earth? Like, why did God go through the trouble of doing all of this, you know? Um, he could have just started over and said, forget humanity, I'm just going to have a world full of dogs. Um, so if you read the Bible, you read the Old Testament, God had plenty of moments when he got fed up with us, and he was like, listen, I've had enough. And in the Bible, it even says, it grieved God that he made man. Like, God was like, dang, like, why did I make these people? They don't listen, they frustrate me. Um, and so that's why the great flood of Noah came, because God's like, I'm just going to start over. Y'all are messing this whole thing up. Um, so God did that once, and then after that, he was like, I promise I'm not going to flood the earth anymore. And then eventually, thousands of years later, Jesus came. But let me stay on topic. So basically, why did God take his word, wrap it up in flesh, and send it to the earth? Um, let's read Hebrews 2, verses 14 through 18. Okay, so stick with me here. Let me find it. Hebrews 2, verses 14 through 18 says... Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for their sins, I mean for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So why did God take his word and wrap it up in flesh and send it to the earth? Because God is God. You know, he was looking down at the, the human experience and was like, what is wrong with these people? Like, I just tell them, don't do this, don't do that, just love me and obey me. Why don't they get it? You know, and so God was like, okay, you know what? Let me go down there and see what the problem is. You know, maybe I don't understand. Maybe I don't get it. So God himself came down on earth to experience what it was what it was like to be a human so that he could understand. So basically, Jesus is God coming down and having a human experience. And it says here that he wrapped himself in flesh and blood so that he could know what it is that we go through, so that he can know what it is when we cry, when, when we're tempted, when we disobey God. You know, Jesus went through everything that human beings go through so that he could understand us more you know so that God could understand us more and so what Jesus is to us now is a priest who vouches for us you know like when God is looking down at us um, and we're doing something we're not supposed to do Jesus is like no God or Jesus yeah Jesus is like no God I've been there like it's tough you know God can have mercy on us now because he has had our experience he has literally walked in our shoes what other God has came down and walked in the shoes of his creation so that he could better understand and empathize with them and that's what God did when he came down here in the personhood of Jesus um, it says, uh, no, yeah, to, to continue, it says, because Jesus was human, he can vouch for us. He pleads our case before God because he knows how hard it is to be a human. You know, when God is like, you know what, I ought to destroy this planet right now. He's like, nah, I'm a chill because it really, it, it really is hard not to like kill people. It really is hard not to lose your mind. It really is hard to, to believe and, you know, to stay faithful to your spouse when you're being tempted to, you know, tithe when you need the money. Um, Jesus is that, that median point between us and God. And God is like, okay, I remember when, when I was there. So I get it. You know what I mean? And so in Hebrews 4 verses 14 through 16, it says that, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we 
<laughs> Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. Come on, Jesus. I love that. I'm going to read it again. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Ooh, I just love that scripture so much. And it makes me just want to tear up and cry, but I won't because then my lashes will fall out and we're going to have to do this whole thing over. Ain't anybody got time for that. But just to think about the fact that, you know, like, because God is tempted in the ways that I'm ten tempted, you know, because God knows how tempting it is to want to have sex before you're married. I know that God is not sitting there like, mm, I smell, I see you over there looking. He gets it, you know, and I'm just like, Jesus, help me because, you, <laughs> because you've been tempted. You can help me when I've been tempted. But in a more serious note, there's nothing that you're dealing with that Jesus has not dealt with. And so that's why he can help you. There's nothing, there's no addiction that you can face that Jesus doesn't empathize with you know like when it says God is love God really is love you know God put himself in our shoes so that he could understand where it is that our where we're coming from and I love that it says that for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us it says that we can approach God's throne with confidence we don't have to come as beggars because we're children of God we are a holy priesthood we can go before God boldly because of the work that Jesus did on the cross I can sin and I can say God forgive me and I can walk away that moment knowing that God God has forgiven me and I can come to God in confidence you know I remember when I used to sin uh, excuse me when I used to sin what I still sin um, I remember <laughs> um, when I used to I'll just go there you know struggle with masturbation you know what I mean and then like you know like after you do it you're just like you feel so bad you don't want to pray and it's like awkward and it's like let me give it a few days and then I'll talk to God but it says here that no we can go forth boldly it doesn't matter if you just got out of that bed with the person that you're uh, not married to it doesn't matter if you just finish watching porn and masturbate and as soon as you orgasm you're like I shouldn't have did that you can go immediately confidently boldly to the throne of God ask for forgiveness and know that God has mercy and and will forgive you in that moment because of the work that Jesus Christ did. It's not by our own work. It's not that we're so good and that God, you know, that we do all the right things that God forgives us. God forgives us because Jesus, God forgives us because he knows what it is to be in the positions that we're in. So no matter how many times you do it, you can be God, I'm not, I'm never going to do this again. And then you do it. And then it's like, well, now I can't pray because I promised. No, you can go forth boldly to God and ask God to forgive you. And you can have confidence that in that moment that he has forgiven you and you don't have to carry that guilt and shame around. You can let it go and, and walk away because, you know, Jesus did that work. Jesus did that work so you can go to God in confidence and ask him for things and know that if you ask in Jesus name it'll be done and now I'm ready to fight and I'm ready to fight because it's just such good news I mean it's just that's why it's called the gospel that's why the gospel gospel really literally means good news like have you heard the good news don't you know that God came and died on the cross for your sins like you can go forth boldly you can be forgiven of everything you God can make you anew there's nothing that you can't do that Jesus can't redeem that's the good news and that's why we as Christians share our faith people are like oh Christians are pushy no we just want you to know that you don't have to walk around with guilt and shame like you don't have to walk around feeling like God doesn't love you because Jesus did that work for us you know like we can go forth boldly to God and know that God's going to accept us, you know? Um, but in conclusion, uh, let's read Hebrews 10 verses 5 through 31. If you have your Bible, you might want to read it long because it's kind of a long verse. So it's Hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 through 31. And it says, Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the, in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. 
Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all, for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made the perfect forever. He has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where they have been forgiven, uh, excuse me, and where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sins is no longer necessary. I was going to read the whole verse, but I feel like that pretty much like sums it up. Basically, Jesus is our high priest. Um, before in the Old Testament, God gave us the law, you know, and we had the law to kind of help us like do religious ceremonies, do sacrifices and all this, these things to atone for our sins. But God's like, the law can never make you perfect, you know, and the law is when you see like religious people who um, just go to church, do all the things, but are mean, you know, that was Jesus' whole thing. When he came, um, when he came down in the Bible, most of the people that he was really speaking at were the religious leaders it's like yeah you keep all the laws of the bible but you treat the poor bad you you're unjust you're excuse me you're unjust in your laws you know and so god's like okay you guys aren't going to get it right by following all these rules and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down i'm going to fulfill all of these laws and so therefore you don't have to make any more uh, atonements. You don't have to do any more sacrifices for your sins because I'm going to be the sacrifice. That's why Jesus is refer referred to as the lamb because he was the lamb of God who was the perfect sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Jesus had all of our experiences as a, as a human, but he did not sin. That's the one thing that separates us. I mean, there's many things that separates us from, um, from Jesus, but it's like, I don't even want to say separates, but it's like, that's why Jesus is able to be our priest because he had our experience and he went through it without sin. Sinning. And so that's why he can help us, you know, he was like, okay, I've been there. This is how I maneuvered this situation. Like, okay, I've been, I dealt with this and this is how I was able to pray and not give in, you know, so Jesus is our high priest. Um, he was the sacrifice to atone for what it is that Adam did. So he came in and, and made up for everything that had been lost um, since the beginning of time. And now all we have to do really as human beings is believe that Jesus was the son of God. And if we believe that Jesus was the son of God and we accept him into our hearts, we will be saved. We can have confidence that we're going to be sentenced to heaven. And so that's why it blows my mind where people reject the gospel of, of Jesus because they think it was a religion created to enslave Africans. Yes, the Bible was used out of context to abuse people. Yes, the Bible was used um, to cause a lot of wars and, and, and violence but the gospel is not about that the gospel simply is hey god loves you so much that he came down as a human being and he died for you so that you guys can be together again on earth and also in heaven that's what the gospel is and that's what it is that you have to believe you don't have to believe that you know uh white supremacy you know went to africa and you know subjugated them through through the banner of religion it's all these things that you know people really spew into our religion but what christianity and what our faith breaks down to is god loves you god came and died for you so that you can be together with him and all you have to do is receive that and i don't normally do this in my videos but if you don't have a relationship with jesus you can have Jesus come into your life right now at this very moment. All you have to do, and this is something that my pastor says, um, this is his invitation to church, and it, all you have to do is just say, Jesus, I give you my life. It's literally that simple. There's a scripture that says, you know, I stand at the door and knock and, um, you know, wait for you to open it. Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to barge his way into your life. He needs your permission. So if you want to know who Jesus is, if you want to have a relationship with him, you just have to pause this video, stop it, turn it off and just say, Jesus, I give you my life. You know, Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you and I want to know you and I guarantee you at that moment, Jesus will then come and dwell inside of you and you and him are going to start to have a living, breathing relationship. God really made it that simple. We no longer have to go to a temple. We no longer have to make all these elaborate sacrifices. We just have to believe that he was the son of God. We have to believe that he was the savior and we have to invite him into our lives. And then it's history from there. You know, that's really what my life 
you know, has been, <laughs> you know, um, like I told you guys before, I grew up really in church, but it was only in 2016 that I'm like, okay, let me take my relationship with Jesus serious. And since then, we've just been having a lifelong conversation that I come back and share with you. So um, I hope this just, this is just a tidbit of um, really what the whole gospel is, is about, not even a tidbit, but the, yeah, it sums it up. It really is that simple, you know, and then you could always do more research and read the Bible for yourself, please. Um, but this is really what sums up who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and what he means to you. So if you have any questions, you know, my DMs are always open. I always respond back to comments on my videos. And I just pray that you're going to enter the new year with a better understanding of Jesus. And that's going to help to just make 2020. So, yeah, that's the gospel. And um, hopefully this made sense. Um, and this is just the beginning of a conversation that you're going to continue to have with God. And I can't wait to, to hear more about it if you care to share. So thank you guys. I love you. I appreciate you always for, you know, stopping by my page. And I'm just excited for our new year. So yeah, have a great rest of the week and um, get to know Jesus more. Bye.